Yeah, this is Mika Vainio, now and on Earth, and at the moment in Boston. Well, the first band was in the very early 80s, uh, maybe 80 or 81, I played drums. And we were playing mainly cover, uh, cover tracks uh, from the bands like XTC, Talking Heads, uh, D-Jam, kind of stuff, New Wave. But we didn't have much any own own music, but this didn't last very long. Uh, then me and, and three other guys, we formed an industrial kind of group, like uh, quite a lot like uh, early Einstein's and Neubauten. And uh, we went around collecting all kind of material like different metal objects from the wastelands and uh, and the garbage and and all kind of tools and uh, like drills and hammers and all that typical uh, industrial noise stuff and and uh, we played a couple of live shows and and made quite a lot of tapes and this was going on about maybe two years we were called uh, Gagarin Combinati. After that I played drums for a very little while in a kind of um, kind of a noise uh, trash rock band but they fired me because I was so bad drummer and I can totally agree with that. Uh, then I had a group with a friend of mine, there were only two of us. This was kind of electronic uh, group with the drum machine and a couple of synthesizers and, uh, and the tapes and tape loops and stuff. This must have been the end of the 80s, like 87, 88. 89 I bought for myself uh, my own first drum machine and, uh, and a couple of more synthesizers and then started to work on my own. But it took a couple of years before it really started to, to take a shape and, and, and uh, to fall together, to come together. And then I made my first two 12 inches, 92, to, to finish Sack label. And it was then around this time I got to know Ilpo also, and we, we decided to make some music together. But we never had at that point an idea as, uh, uh, to form a band or a group. Or it was just uh, experimenting to see what would happen and, and maybe do just a couple of tracks. But in the end it was working quite well, so we kept going on and, and then it became Pansonic or Panasonic at that time.
was then surprising when we uh, found out the ways how to, to make it happen. Uh, it, it, it's not very easy always. But we often, uh, in this early industrial group I was in uh, Kagarin Kombinati, we often made a really a lot of uh, noise with uh, very small uh, things, with, just with the small transistor radio maybe, or, or just a couple of uh, metallic objects. And we found a ways how to do this. So, I don't know, it wasn't surprising that it happened, but it was maybe surprising that we also could make it and, and, and learn how to do it. In 1997 I moved to London where I lived two years and Ilpo was living in Finland at that time so the situation was similar. Then I went to Barcelona and uh, lived there three years before Ilpo moved there. And now I moved to Berlin and Ilpo is living in mainly in Finland and sometimes in Barcelona. So it's nothing new on that. It, it's, it's okay. We then usually do work at my home studio, Ilpo uh, comes over and uh, we work together then. One show, one of the very first shows we played in London, in this place called Vox, and uh, at the uh, middle of the set, it was quite the perfect point actually, with a really um, long build-up uh, to a, a loud noise. Then, uh, when when we got into the the most intense part, that the fuses blew from the whole building so the whole building went uh, pitch black and this was the end of the show and I think quite perfect ending <laughs> Uh, 
try to avoid to, to, to plan too much beforehand. We have uh, an idea, a certain frame, what we want to do and what type of thing we want to do, but we also want the things to have a, a possibility to, to grow on their own also. It's often quite difficult if you have a very specific idea beforehand and then to, to, to make the track really then work that way, what you expect. Sometimes it happens easily, but often it doesn't, you know. It, it's, it's totally different to, to imagine a track in your head than when it's really there. Uh, and and uh, this can end up being quite frustrating. You, you keep trying and trying for days and days with the one track and try to make it fall in place and, and to be what you wanted it to be. And sometimes then you just have to give up because it, it doesn't work. So it's a lot more easier way and, and sometimes more interesting way to, to just to let the things grow on themselves. Like to, to, to leave more freedom for the, the sounds and, and the track to grow by itself. When we play live, there is quite a lot of improvisation. Uh, and compared to uh, our recorded music, uh, that is the main difference. Because when we record things, then everything is uh, planned beforehand. At that point, when we are starting recording things, then we know the track all, all the way through, exactly how it... Uh, should be so there's no improvisation usually when we record things and on our studio material but when we play live there's maybe one third of the what we play is, is improvised amount of stuff we can bring is limited then of course we have to do quite a lot of compromise on, on what we take with us and uh, that way our if we play uh, uh, tracks live which are also in our CDs or, or records 
they are quite different also because of that. But I think this is uh, also a good aspect because then, then it's a more different version, maybe more interesting. The live version is always quite different than from the, the studio version. In general, I think we have been very lucky. Most of the collaborations have been working really well. We, we never have had any arguments, small ones of course, but mainly more like discussions, and, and, uh, but not really anything uh, negative argument like thing. And uh, I've been quite happy with most of those things what we have done. It wasn't hard to convince our record label, actually Paul Smith who, who runs Blast First was quite uh, into this idea to make a, a large release. Um, it, it took a lot of work of course, but in the other hand then again it was easier to do than, uh, than a single CD. Because now we separated these different, roughly these different types of stuff we are doing to, to, to each CD. When we are doing a single CD, we usually have all of these different kind of uh, tracks in, uh, in the same CD and this is more difficult to combine to make this kind of uh, mixture of things to work. In Kesto we had uh, them separated on, on each CD, so that gave us uh, certain freedom to, to work more freely on, on among on each style and, and to have more space like the whole CD for, for every every type of stuff but then again of course a lot more work to, to, to finish everything. We have uh, a new CD and a double LP coming out on November. We finished it uh, end of June and uh, the main difference maybe to the what we have done before is that we are using also acoustic sounds on this CD or LP on this record. Um, there's uh, a cello on, on three of the tracks, uh, Icelandic uh, cello player playing with us and then a lot of uh, acoustic sounds which are processed so um, or such a way I think it's not very easy to recognize them as an acoustic sounds but anyway there are quite uh, many of them 
I think it's quite plentiful, maybe most uh, uh, most plentiful music we have done with Pansonic this far.